All right. Is this is this on? Can you guys hear me? All right. I guess I'll start. Since we're a little, a little behind. Um, so uh, I'm Alvaro, and I'm going to be talking about learning electronics and software. I didn't get to finish that part as much, so a little bit. Uh, the cheesy way, OK? So what's this about? Um, uh, it's about making circuits, circuit boards, and it's about making cheese. Um, why am I doing this? I like cheese. No, I, I really, I love cheese. This was a gift someone gave me. It's a cheese-shaped cutting board for cheese with stuff inside. Also, I like electronics. So, you know, why not both? All right, so quick, um, how does one make cheese? In this case, I'm covering brie, which is the kind of I've been making. So get ready for a very, very fast how to make brie course. So first, you get your ingredients. You get some milk. You get some heavy cream. You get some cultures, some rennet, um, some salt, and some mold, and that, that kind of stuff. You have molds and molds, like this and then the, the <laughs> mushroom kind. Then you warm up the milk. Uh, you let it. Uh, you add all the ingredients, and it curds, so it, it uh, basically hardens, and um, you cut it up. Then you put it in the mold, and you put all the molds, uh, let them kind of drain, then you flip it. And this is kind of what it looks like right after. Um, and then you do that for like a day. You flip it once. Then you add salt. Not this much salt. I screwed it up big time. Uh, I put like 12 times as much salt. And th that was a mistake. Uh, it was my first time. <laughs> the recipe was for 12. Uh, I made one. Yeah. Anyway, uh, then after that, you put them in the aging container, which is Tupperware. And then you put them in a cheese cave. This is not mine. This is mine. <laughs> so this is, uh, I'll, I'm going to cover electronics, but this is just various iterations of like just plastic containers with electronics in them. Um, this is the cheese aging. I took a picture each day, and you can see the mold growing. So brie, that white, uh, the, the stuff around it, the rind, is just mold. <laughs> I don't know if you want to know that or not. but um, So that happens for about like a week, week and a, uh, like 12 days. Then you wrap it, and then you label it, and then you wait, and you flip it every other day, and then you have cheese. And it's delicious. <laughs> I don't think I'm allowed to do that. <laughs> the liability and whatnot. Um, so cheese, well, and it's in California, and yeah. Um, cheese aging requirements. So brie specifically, you want to have like 10 degrees Celsius, more or less, and like 80, 90 percent relative humidity. Um, most people, they do is they get a, a wine fridge because usually the wine fridges are just about the right temperature, and they just put it in there. Other option is to get a mini fridge and make a temperature controller for it. So I got a mini fridge from Craigslist. Uh, one morning, they have sharp parts, so just don't cut yourself. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so uh, this was kind of my first prototype. I was like, I'm going to make cheese. I have a fridge. I'm going to need to control temperature, humidity, do all these things. So this thing is from, I think, from Adafruit. It's a relay. Um, for, so you can just control it with a pin from your uh, microcontroller, and it controls just an outlet, and you can control the fridge. Here I have three different kind of temperature sensors. I have some analog temperature sensors, and then this guy's temperature and humidity sensor. And I was just using an old project um, to test it out. Now you have sensors. You need to get them in the fridge. So how do you do that? <laughs> I drilled a hole in the fridge. <laughs> Again, not recommended. Because, um, yeah, I mean, I don't want to lose the, the, get the, the warm air in. That's just inefficient. Um, then I was like, OK, I need to control humidity. So they have these really cheap uh, uh, mist generating things that you put in water, and then they're for kind of effects for shows. Um, and they just uh, uh, vaporize or nebulize. I don't know. They do something to the water, and then and you get a mist. So it, I, I went through lots of iterations, but basically I ended up putting it in this little container. And I had a fan that just blows air out. And then I have a hose that refills it with water, because eventually it, it, um, it empties out. But that's too many cables, so I need to drill more holes. Uh-oh. Uh, you can't tell, but there's a, a metal tube there that's been drilled through. So <laughs> 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 yeah, 
uh, as I was drilling the second, the first time it was fine. The second time I drilled and I heard tss. So yeah, that's not good. Um, there went my fridge. Uh, so I had to get a new one. And eventually I just settled on, I'm just going to put the cables in the door. And it's good enough. Uh, you learn. All right, so again, I, I was totally over engineering this thing. So I have uh, different temperature humidity sensors from different vendors, different price points. And I got a bunch, of Adafruit had all these um, development boards. So I just put them all up and, and test them out. Um, and then that's how my uh, called Astor project began. And this project is my cheese cave controller kind of board. Um, so I'm just gonna tell you all the things I did wrong and some things I did right uh, in designing this. So this board basically has a little STM32 microcontroller, has a, a I squared C, which is the way you talk to the sensors uh, multiplexer, and it's USB out. Um, I have eight I squared C channels because all of these temperature and humidity sensors have the same I squared C channel, which means you cannot use more than one in this one channel, which is, or adre address, sorry. Um, so some things that I did right, if you will, um, I basically, this is my first board. I don't know what I'm going to need. I still never made cheese. This is pure speculation. Um, so I added ports for everything. I have here ground, three volts, five volts, and then I can select the voltage for this other I squared C bus. So some sensors run at five volts, some sensors run at three volts. My microcontroller does not like five volts. It will die except for the USB part of it. But um, so here I can do five volts here. The I squared C multiplexer lets you, you know, translates it back to, to, to normal to three volts here. And it's great. OK, so that's what I did right. What I did wrong, all right. My footprint for my voltage, my three volt regulator was wrong. So I didn't double check it. Uh, and it, it was like half the size. I, I managed to put it on there. Uh, you can see the labels here are, <laughs> are covered. Uh, when you do your uh, layout in KiCad, oh, everything looks so pretty. And then you buy this thing that covers it, and, and it, that's not nice. Um, OK, which one of these pins is power? Which one is ground? Which one is SEL and SDA? I don't know. I didn't label it. Mistake. Um, same thing here. I have GPIO 0, 1, 2, 3. I thought I was being clever. And then 3 to 7. Wait, 3 is on both sides. No, that's wrong. So didn't double check it. I have my programming connector here. And it's, it's not ideal. It's not standard. But um, yeah, so just kind of going over. Uh, I'm going to go through these. This is kind of what it looked like back in the day. Uh, so I had all these different temperature humidity sensors just to test out my software. It's basically sending it all over USB serial. Um, and then I have my computer measuring that. And then you can set one of these temperature humidity sensors. You say, OK, this one's outside the fridge. This one's inside the fridge. And this was in cheese agent container one or two. And that way, the controller can turn it on and off a as needed. You'll see there's a black magic probe over there. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, so that's that. Um, little hints, get a USB microscope that's really cheap, because when you're soldering, it, it really helps. Um, OK, so version two. I realized I didn't need that many channels. It was getting, it was just, it was huge. I fixed, um, I fixed these guys, as you, can, as you can tell. Now the label is correct. I labeled my UART pins. I labeled uh, here. Um, you know, you have voltage, SEL, SEA. So now it's kind of a more minimal, but it's actually labeled, so it's useful. And I have the, the uh, standard ARM 10-pin connector. So that, that was kind of uh, nice to have. All right. Oh, actually, I forgot to tell you guys about my crystal. So this is an 8 megahertz crystal for USB. Turns out this microcontroller doesn't need it, but I didn't know that at the time. And then this was for the 32 kilohertz crystal, which is for a real-time clock. Again, all these things are not needed, but I wanted to teach myself. I wanted to use the real-time clock. Just th th this is all an excuse for me to learn electronics. It's not really needed. So I, uh, I made the second one, and I, I fixed the little crystal, but it didn't work. And I didn't know why. It turns out the crystal oscillators, you need load capacitors. And I was using this, the correct load capacitors for the cr crystal, but then the microcontroller couldn't drive it. So then I had to get a different crystal, different load capacitors. And even then, it was kind of working, kind of not working. So I uh, did an overkill. And I redesigned it. 
and this is all VS. I, I basically went to the data sheet and did this exact reference design, which is like little ground VS in a different ground plane, and it, it just, uh, reference designs are great. They'll tell you, it, sometimes it's overkill, but it was fun to try that out. Um, so this is just a smaller version of the board. Now I only have four channels, because I, I didn't need any more. I don't have the, the selecting five volts, three volts, because I, I converged in a particular sensor, the, the SHT31 from Sensoron. Um, so yeah, it's just, just a little evolution of this board. You might notice some botch wires here. Oh, what's going on? I, uh, I, I, I couldn't program the part, and I was really confused because I didn't change that much from, from previous iterations. Um, turns out power was not connected to the microcontroller <laughs> and two of the three power pins. Like, what? But uh, I, I, I ran it through DRC. So KiCad has the design rule check, and you run design rule check. I have no errors. Ah, there's this little button here that I didn't know about. <laughs> so this was a little gotcha for, for noobs. And, and I, I, I made many KiCad boards in the past. I just never ran into this. And I was in a hurry, I guess. And I didn't know that this not having a connection made is not an error. You have to go to the, and I can kind of see why they might do it. But it, yeah, it was, it was very, um, yeah, that sucked. Um, I also used this particular version to learn about uh, stencils using, uh, using solder paste instead of hand soldering everything. This is not the correct way to set it up, but I was just learning. So <laughs> I tweeted this photo and then I forget his name from Osh Stencil. It's like, no, you just put the tape on one end of the, uh, of the stencil and then uh, put the paste on. I was learning, but still. So yeah, if you tweet out with the people that make these things, they will tell you how you're doing it wrong. Uh, in a helpful way. So I learned how to do a paste, and it's, it's so much easier to just uh, put the solder paste and put all the components down and then heat it up. I got a, um, one of those lab beaker heaters on eBay. It's like a ceramic top, and it's super easy. A lot of people get just like a skillet or something, but for my boards, they're all small enough that I was able to just do that. All right, okay. The goal of <laughs> has always been to make cheese shape circuit boards to make cheese, because why wouldn't we? So this is my first try. Um, I did it with Osh Park, of course, as all the other stuff, because it's awesome. Um, I, for this one, I made it all as a single board, and, and it just got routed out and, and cut. Um, it was very tricky to get these angles right in KiCad, because I basically have my board outline, and I wasn't sure if I, if you put these all together, it's a perfect circle, but you need to have a hundred mil kind of cut between them. And it just, uh, I wouldn't recommend that. Uh, <laughs> I would use some sort of panelizer or whatever. But anyway, we have this new version. Um, some new things here. The, I have a smaller power, uh, three volt regulator because I, you know, I don't need that huge thing. I don't know why I circle this. Uh, USB, oh yeah, it's USB only. I got rid of the UART. Uh, just it was a backup. Uh, I basically got the firmware stable enough that I could do everything over USB. So the microcontroller was USB serial. I could do firmware updates over USB. It's great. I also added a temperature and humidity sensor to this board because I figured why waste some cables when this board's already outside the fridge. I can have my reference temperature be outside of the fridge. So I put it in. I put the footprint wrong again. Uh, <laughs> and it didn't work. And this was more of uh, just subtleties in the footprint the, that the manufacturer provided. It's a very small uh, pitch component, and I, yeah, I was kind of having trouble. All right, so after that one, we have the first yellow one. So what's good about this one? It's yellow, and you know that's, that's great. Uh, <laughs> cheese is not purple. So <laughs> this is kind of what it was all kind of com coming up to be. Uh, I don't know where I got the idea. Someone might have suggested it. That wouldn't it be cool? And that's, that's what happened, right? So this is the same as a purple one, uh, minus a few connectors. But uh, look, I have labels now for all the things. So here you go. Oh, th that's that one. Next generation. Uh, this is no longer using an STM32. This is a Nordic Semiconductors NRF52. And you can see uh, there's now a Bluetooth antenna here because previously I was using my 
uh, controller board connected to a Raspberry Pi with Wi-Fi, and then I, that thing was running all the, the, the controlling, but more, mostly logging. All, all the controlling for the fridge gets done here, but if I want to monitor and save all the data, uh, there's not enough uh, memory here, so I was doing it on Raspberry Pi. But that's just too much hardware, so I figured why not put Bluetooth on it and just get the data wirelessly. And so I, I went and did that. I fixed the footprint for this one, so now it actually works. Um, things I screwed up. I put a, a UR just as a backup because I always screw up. And I used a very small like uh, pitch connector. Uh, as you can see, these are the bigger ones. And I didn't think I was getting used to it, then I had to, and it was annoying. So uh, don't think you're going to not need this. Um, and then here, this is more of a very specific bug that I ran into. I, I, I got this board, I put it together, I refloated it. I programmed it just with a blinky, because that's the first thing everyone does, just to <laughs> see if the board works, and it blinked. Went to bed, next morning, I, I get up and I plug it in and there's no blinking. I'm like, whoa, whoa, okay, I program it and it starts blinking. And I restart it, no more blinking. I was very confused, and it took me a long time to figure it out, but basically, this microcontroller has an option to have a, it has a built-in uh, DC to DC converter for, for power. So when it does Bluetooth transmission, they can usually lower the power consumption quite a bit by using a built-in DC-DC. But that requires some external inductors that I didn't put in, um, which is OK unless it thinks those inductors are there and tries to use them. And the default firmware I was using was enabling the DC-DC converter and trying to basically get power from components that weren't there. And the only reason it was working was by pure chance, because the, the debugger <laughs> was providing enough power to kind of give it a kick to survive. And then every time it would restart without the debugger, it would just die. So I, I eventually, I just re reprogrammed it with a setting saying, like, hey, there is no DC-DC. Uh, don't try to turn it on. But that was a couple of days of just debugging. It was uh, very annoying. Uh, other tips for putting together boards, I like to lay out all my components and just label them. And that way it's very easy to just pick, pick, pick. Uh, when you're doing one at a time, if you're doing tons, that's not efficient. Um, Oshpark, unfortunately, doesn't do this color, so I had to <laughs> go to China. And that was a whole new experience for me, buying from, uh, it, it's just, you guys spoil this at Oshpark. Like, all, all the other uh, PCB vendors you have to talk to humans sometimes, and it, it's, it's just very annoying. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, and also, I ordered a stencil from <laughs> the tab, and they sent me this huge thing like this for my little circuit board. It just, uh, no. So I, I also use Osh stencils for the, for, the, for the other ones. But this, I figured, oh, it's an extra $5 from China. And th these boards, I think, it, it, it was, I didn't know you could get stuff that fast from China for that cheap, it was, it was weird. Um, okay, other things I learned in this project was, um, this is the first version of the temperature humidity sensor. I use Macrofab, which is a service where you, they make your boards and they populate them for you. And I went to see, I, I've never done that before, so I wanted to learn, hey, how do I have someone make a board for me? So I use Macrofab. Uh, and because this, this component, I was afraid to solder it with good reason as I failed later. Um, so yeah, it was kind of a, a fun experiment uh, to, to, to do that. Again, I rushed it and I forgot to label all the pins, so it's really annoying. I'm just gonna keep telling you, label all the pins. Um, because now you have to look at the schematic every time you wanna connect this, and it's quite annoying. Uh, other iteration, for, I wanted to make the temperature humidity sensor smaller, um, so I did this one. And again, how do you solder a pad in here well, this is all before I did the, the reflow and the solder paste. How do you solder this middle pad? So a friend recommended, oh, just put a hole there and then put solder from the back, which surprisingly worked. Uh, so that's a cool trick uh, for, for soldering some of these. Yeah. It, it worked. Um, uh, this is actually, we're kind of going backwards, but this was the first purple triangular one. And again, guess what? I forgot to label the things. So, <laughs> yeah. A and this was, again, I had, it, it was kind of tough. Another cool thing I learned was flexes. Oshpark flex. Uh, not official. 
but uh, the, the, uh, they asked if, if uh, anyone had some sample design, so I made a, the temperature and humidity sensor, but flexible. I figured, oh, I can bend this around the Tupperware container and then make a good seal, which turns out is not needed because if you seal your Tupperware container, the humidity gets out of control. Um, but yeah. And I was showing someone yesterday, and they pointed out a bug in my Twitter handle. I put a J instead of an L. <laughs> and so that was very embarrassing, because it's not even the letter next to it in the keyboard. It's two letters out. <laughs> I am ashamed. Anyway, uh, so now that you've kind of seen the whole thing, this is what it used to look like, my, my fridge. So I have the, um, the, ch the controller. Here was the Raspberry Pi. Um, this was the Wi-Fi dongle <laughs> on a USB hub. And then I have a water bottle. I have lots of water bottles. Those are my thermal capacitors, if you will, um, because the cheese, it's not enough mass. So if you put all these water bottles, it'll uh, steady your, your temperature every time. Because I have to open it and flip them every day in the beginning. And, and it's basically just these, the temperature sensors are in each of these containers. And it turned out, after all that I did for controlling the humidity, I didn't have to. It's mostly a matter of monitoring it. Most people just look, and uh, if there's condensation on the side, they crack it open a bit more. They wipe it down and crack it open a bit more. So I mostly just instrumented my cheese making process uh, to, to measure the temperature and humidity. Hopefully when I screw up, I can go back uh, and see like, oh, this is what I did. And I also can see when I open the fridge and, and whatnot. But this is kind of what it looks like. The new one doesn't have any of this. It's just this guy, but yellow. And, and it's, it's wireless. Another thing I made, uh, which another gotcha, was a little relay. This was a relay for the water pump. And oh, look, there's a lot of rework. Ha! Here's the data, here's the data sheet. Bottom view. <laughs> always be, yes. So when you're laying out your circuit board, you're always like looking down from the top. And these people uh, sometimes <laughs> will. Uh, <laughs> We'll give you the wrong side. Um, yeah, anyway, other people have done rants about this. I'm not, not, I'm not gonna go in there. Uh, <laughs> so here's some other iterations of, of when I had this uh, at a different place. But yeah, you have like your Raspberry Pi and all that stuff. Um, when I did the Bluetooth, I didn't want to write all these Bluetooth code because the, uh, yeah, who wants to do that? So I found out about this uh, USB, it's, <laughs> you probably can't see it. It's a little USB dongle from uh, Blue Giga. It's a BLED112. It basically exposes Bluetooth over USB, but shows up as a USB to serial adapter. So you don't need any drivers. And then there's Python scripts, uh, Python libraries you can use to, to uh, talk to it. And I basically just sent out Bluetooth beacons, which is basically write only. Like I'm not doing bidirectional communications, just transmitting the, the temperature of each of the sensors. And then I receive it. I promise I'd do some software, so just a little bit of Python. I also use this to teach myself Python. And uh, PySerial is great for talking to serial boards. When you install PySerial, it comes with manyterm.py, which is basically a terminal program. A lot of people use screen or hyperterminal on Windows and that kind of thing, but any OS you install, you have Python and PySerial, you just do miniterm, you serial port in your bot raid, and it's just, I, I don't know, I, I, that's all I use now. Uh, pip env is this new way of installing packages. So since my scripts require PySerial, matplotlib, and numpy, you have to tell people like, oh, you gotta install all these things. With pip env, they just need pip env, and it has all the requirements built in, like in the repo. So if you clone my repo and you say pip env uh, install, it'll get all the requirements and put them in a little virtual environment so it doesn't install them in the rest of your system. And when you run my script, it just uh, does that. Uh, real quick, this is what it looks like, a uh, cheese making pass uh, f over many, like several weeks. So this is the beginning when I'm flipping them every day. And then this is just when they're wrapped and, and I'm, I'm turning them around. And I noticed some cool stuff. I'm just zooming in. This is uh, every time I open the doors, it, like the temperature and humidity go nuts. And another cool thing I, I, I saw was the temperature humidity, of course, well, relative humidity is dependent on temperature. So every time uh, the, the humidity is on top, temperature is down here. Every time the temperature changes, the humidity uh, goes nuts. And that blue one you see is my reference temperature in the fridge. 
and the ones up top are inside of the Tupperware container. So that's a reason to have them in a container. It stabilizes, uh, even if, it, if it's cracked open a little bit, it does, the humidity doesn't go crazy. And it's because of the, whenever the fridge turns on the compressor, it gets cold, all the water condenses on it, so the humidity kind of drops. And when it turns off, the water evaporates again and it just creates all sorts of, I don't think of cheese scares because an average the humidity is fine, but I, I just wanted to, to do that. Uh, so that's it. Uh, <laughs> I have that project on GitHub. That's me on Twitter. I have all these boards. I'll show them. Uh, just come find me um, and that, so we can go to the next thing. And I also, I, I do a podcast. I have stickers. I'm, if I didn't say that, my co-host would hurt me. Uh, so it's the unnamed reverse engineering podcast. We're just starting it out. And yeah, we have a few things. Thank you.